Hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. All right, I see we have some people hopping on. Please say hello in the chat here as you are hopping on so I can see who's here and I can say hello. Hopefully YouTube is getting those notifications out now if you are subscribed to my channel and if you have your notifications set to all, you should be getting a notification. Um, hey Liz, hey Karen. So say hello. Um, let's see. I want to get the chat here on my phone too. And uh, hi Lisa, welcome. Let me get my table up here a little bit higher. Hope everybody's having a great week. There we go. I think uh, so. Those of you that are just hopping on, it, we just jumped from three to thirty. Did you get notified by YouTube? Did you get a notification that I was live? And that's how you found this live stream. Hey, Cookie and Sarah and Pam and Donna, bunch of people hopping on, a whole bunch just said hi all at the same time. If this is your first time watching me live, let me know. And I also want to let you know that I do have a Telegram broadcast channel um, I let those people know, I sent them a reminder about 40 minutes ago, letting them know that I was going to be live on my YouTube channel. I only still have about 60 people subscribed to my Telegram. So if you want to be sure that I will let you know when I'm going live on Facebook or YouTube, follow, go to, um, in the top or the bottom, in the description of this video where it says all my links, um, there is a link there for Telegram. That will give you my Telegram link. Um, it also has my Magnolia website, my Amazon storefront, um, my email. You can send me an email. Okay, good. Yeah, Cookie, I know that you are um, subscribed to my Telegram. And I'll also say that at by the end of the month, whoever is subscribed by the end of March, I am going to do a little prize drawing because I really want to get people on there. You know how Facebook kind of had that little bit of a hiccup um, a week or so ago, I couldn't message anyone on Facebook. Um, the only people I could notify whether I was going to go live or not were my Telegram subscribers. So, hey, Deb, where in Michigan are you? I'm in Hudsonville. My Telegram didn't work. It was, and I checked my notification. It was, um, okay. I'm going to show you, you can be subscribed but then you also need to turn your notifications on. So let me go to Telegram here. All right, so here's like where I sent the message. If you click on the name of my Telegram right here, it's going to open this up. You need to have this toggle for notifications. You need to have it on. Otherwise, you're not going to get notifications. Okay, so you have to make sure you have the um, notification little slider thing on. Oh, you just got it. Okay, that's funny. All right, all right. And um, I'm gonna let you guys know this ahead of time. Um, I am gonna be opening up a mystery hostess party for the rest of March on my Magnolia website. Most of the new spring supplies have been released. There's a few other items some of which are going to be released on Friday. Um, so if you're interested in that, make sure you're following my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page, okay? Because that's where I'm going to post that. Eerie. Okay, cool. Some of you got YouTube notifications. Awesome. All right, a bunch of you are here for the first time. That is fabulous. So because you're here for the first time, let me just say briefly, my name is Cindy. I've been here on YouTube for over five years with my channel, Monarch Mom DIY. We hit our 100,000. I don't even know where I put that. Thing. Oh, it's way up there on the top shelf. Oh, you can see it right there. My 100,000 subscriber um, silver play button plaque. Yay. That was in December. And I'm also a creator and leader with Magnolia Design Company. If you don't know what that is, 
you're going to find out tonight because I'm going to make a project using one of our stencils that you guys are going to help me choose. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. So what I have planned for tonight, I found this really cool. I don't know if this was a Hobby Lobby, um, maybe, but it's this wood with metal, but this is the back. Let me show you the front. Obviously why this jumped out at me, right? Okay, so I paid $6.99 for this, but I thought that was worth it because it's real wood, real metal, and then it's got this raised area in the front. I liked the, um, just the, the different design of this. I thought this would be a really cool surface to make over with something else in the middle for my craft show. So it does have a hanger here. Um, so it'd be really easy to keep this as a vertical, but I could always remove that or move it if I wanted to do something horizontally. Okay. So this was just a local, um, thrift store I had this, somebody donated it and I picked out a few stencils that I wanted you guys opinion on. Okay. Now this is one of the only new ones that I have not used yet got this clock with some flowers. Let me take it out of the sheet protector so it's not so shiny. Aw, thanks, Amy. That's really sweet. Um, And it says, for everything there is a time, Ecclesiastes 3.1. Now, you can't really tell here, but once you put the chalk paste on this stencil, the it's a beautiful image. My only question about this is, does it go with the metal and wood? Maybe it does, and I should just do it. Okay, so let's say there is a time. You love that one, Carlene? The other ones I thought about, I have not done anything with this one in a while. This is the Fear Not. Mine's a little, it got a little wrinkly when I uh, put it back on the backer sheet, but this is Isaiah 4110. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then it's got this greenery here. I thought that might look nice. And I'm pretty much just thinking off-white and black chalk paste. I want to keep it real basic. So we've got time, fear not. Um, and then I also pulled out this one, Romans 5, 8. So this is really simple just with some words. I, I might have to put the Romans 5, 8 somewhere else, but while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let's call this one Romans. These are my top three choices. I also like this one. However, my craft show is after Easter. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to sell it maybe if it's after Easter. All right. Which one, Constance? The time one? Okay, I see two votes for clock and two votes for fear not. All right, you guys keep voting. What I wanna do down here is at first I was gonna paint over it and then I realized that this is pretty thick. I think I can maybe get this off all in one, in one, uh, shot here if I heat it up and kind of use my burnishing tool. I might have to sand it a little bit if it sticks in some places, like maybe where the glue was. I doing? I'm not even pointing it at the thing. Wow, somebody needs some sleep. I was pointing it up in the air. Let me get my other scraper tool. This little guy's from Walmart. Now this is MDF. I don't want to peel it. I just want to get as much of the paper off as I can.
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just come in here with the scraper. Let's see. If I keep it pretty flat, I think I can get most of it. So I'm gonna scrape off what I can, and then I'm gonna get my little sander to finish it off. <laughs> Amy, oh gosh. I was trying to I was trying to think about too many things at one time. That's hilarious. All right, so this isn't the fun part, but this, I just, sometimes I want you guys to see this part to show you that you can find stuff and with a few tools, you can remove, you know, whatever's glued to the front and make it something your own, okay? I'm always looking at the bones of signs like this, things that are on clearance at Hobby Lobby, and whatnot, okay? You don't have to keep anything the way that it is when you buy it. All right, are we still voting? My sweater, I made that. Oh, the sweater itself is from Walmart, and then I used our Magnolia stencil, the Enjoy the Good Things. Um, I found this one that was the multicolor, and then there was one that was like, tans and grays but i only found it in two these those two color schemes all right i think i think i'm going to go ahead and do the the time one mainly because it's new and also it's going to fit a little bit better on this surface the fear not is a little bit a little bit too wide it like goes right to the edge. I mean, I could do it, but it's gonna be easier to do the time one. All right, I don't wanna be here all night scraping this, so. Let's just do a little bit more. And then I'm gonna just get my little sander and we'll finish it off. You could also use an electric sander, would work even faster. There we go, it's a big chunk. And this little scraper was just uh, from Walmart in like the, I don't know, automotive and tool area. Okay, see what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna gouge into the MDF. Okay, so let's get our, They have those, oh, some, yes, I have seen these sometimes at Dollar Tree. I feel like the one at Walmart is not that much more and you get a bunch of extra blades with it. So yeah, either way, it's a great little tool to be able to, you know, scrape these paper things off here. Maybe I do need a little heat on it. Oh yeah, that works a lot better when you heat it up. Whew, that thing gets hot.
I'm going to have little paper shavings everywhere. You guys still voting on the um which stencil to use time or fear not no because i already told you i was gonna do the clock didn't i they have a longer handled one of these that would be helpful because my hand is getting kind of hot Okay, almost there. Just has this other little section over here. And I really have to do this because if I would have tried to paint on top of the paper, it was going to peel up anyway because it was already not really stuck down very securely. And if I'm going to sell this in a craft show, I want to make sure it looks, you know, finished. I don't want it to look like I found something at the thrift store and painted over it. All right, I'm going to put that down so I can... All right. At the hardware store, okay. So anyway, like I said, this is not the fun part, but I hope that, um, maybe not every time I do a project, but sometimes I think it's helpful to see the process of you know what you can do with surfaces that you find other places just because they say something that you maybe don't care for or whatnot doesn't mean you can't use the surface itself okay come on last little bit all right let me dump all this paper be fun to vacuum up later right okay so we've got that I'm just gonna sand the rest of the remnants of the paper with my little sander this is in my Amazon storefront very very handy tool and I think I already said this piece in the middle is MDF okay so let's get that too much work to get this nice beautiful blank slate now that we're going to make gorgeous all right so we're going to use this stencil for everything there is a time I only I might need to move the Ecclesiastes 3 1 over but what we need to do first is we need to paint this so I'm going to use well, let's see. What do you guys think? I think things are easier to sell at a craft show if they are neutral colors. So I think instead of doing a color, I'm going to do plaster. Get the paper off myself. Yeah, it's on me, isn't it? I don't want it in my coffee either. My, it's, it is decaf, just so you know. This time of night, it's decaf. All right. Oh yeah, this is a nice mess down there. All right, I'm going to just start in the middle. I want to be really careful just to go to the edge. 
Oh, my sleeves. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Okay, I just want to go to the edge. I don't want it to go down on the sides and I don't want it to get on the metal. If you go slow, you should be able to accomplish that without too much trouble. What do you guys think of this surface? Has anyone seen this surface before? Is it from Hobby Lobby? It didn't have a Hobby Lobby tag on the back, but it kind of looks Hobby Lobby-ish, doesn't it? Thank you for the hearts. Appreciate you guys. How's this working out for everybody? Is it okay coming live on Wednesday instead of Tuesday and Thursday? It's just, it got to be so much. And now Tuesday nights I teach at um, a life skills class. I'm teaching a parenting class. So it was just a lot. So this is actually better for me. I do have church stuff usually on Wednesday, but that gets done around eight. So nine works for me. No, but it is cool. Oh, the, the, you've never seen this surface. Doesn't it look, Sierra, like it's from Hobby Lobby? A little chunk there. Okay. Now remember, when I paint a surface that I'm going to stencil on, I'm going to try and get it as smooth and even as possible, but then I am going to sand it lightly before we stencil on it so that our stencil can lay really nicely. Okay, good. It's good for you guys. All right, so while that's drying, we can chat about a couple of things. Because there are, um, oh, maybe it is Michael's. Maybe you're right. I can't tell because any tag that was on the back was removed. So anyway, um, just want to remind you guys about the March Craft Club kit. This is the kit for March with the hat, the two patches, and you have eight choices of your stencil created with a purpose i run on coffee and chaos patience loading please wait the sunflowers which i actually did on this hat that i got from walmart and the patches i got at walmart um caution i have no filter be kind heard that and guess what chicken butt this kit is $22.99 and you get everything even the ink these are iron on patches so if you are interested in Craft Club, uh, go to my link to my website and then just click on Craft Club and you will find out. So we do ask for a three month minimum commitment, but every month you get a complete project and it comes directly to you. And starting next month, um, customer Craft Club kits are going to process on the 10th. Even if before you weren't getting yours till the end of the month, they're changing them all now. Creators on the 1st, customers on the 10th. It's awesome. Yes. Yes, Vicki, we're going to do the hat project. Probably be early May or early April. Um, last month's project was the bunnies. Let's see. You got these three bunny shapes and the rub-on transfers and the beads and the jute to make little necklaces. So every month it just gets better and better, I think. And um, I just wanted to give that little reminder about Craft Club. Since there are some of you on here who are new to watching me. Hi, Rita. Awesome, Pam. You're going to love it. It's so fun. And I'm, I wouldn't call myself a hat person, but I may wear it, you know, sometimes. It's cute, though. I did the hat. Yep, I did it on... I did it last week sometime. I went live so many times last week, I can't even remember. All right, so I'm just drying this. You don't really need to see it. I'm just drying the paint. With my heating tool here, also from Magnolia. Okay. 
We want to make sure it's nice and dry. Yes, March 22nd. Oh, yeah. Rita, she she lives by me and goes to our church. So we're I'm talking to Vicki about an in-person one. But my next Craft Club Zoom for March is a week from this Friday. So March 22nd. You are correct. Okay. All right, so this is dry now. This is our surface. Goes this way because the little hanger is back here. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna switch my sandpaper. I was using 220, now I'm gonna switch to 400 because that's a finer sandpaper and it's gonna make my sign nice and smooth. I'm gonna go lightly because I don't want to um, expose the MDF again. I, I want it to still be the painted surface. I can see a couple brush strokes on there, but I don't think it's really going to matter. You could even, sorry, I forgot my camera was up. You could even distress a little bit heavier on the edges. If you want to have that wood wood look showing there. Okay, that's pretty smooth. What is that? A little something there. That's okay. We'll probably cover it up with the stencil anyway. Okay, so once I have it sanded, uh, no, Rita, you're good. Craft Club Zoom is on the 22nd. All right, I'm gonna smooth that, get any dust off of there. All right, let me move these other stencils that we're not gonna use. Take a sip of my coffee. Mm. I'm sorry, but decaf coffee just does not taste as good as regular coffee. All right, I have not used this one, so I'm gonna write I'm just going to Ecclesiastes on the back because I don't want to put my stencil back on this side. I want to make sure I get it back on the sticky side or shiny side. All right, so I'm going to peel my stencil off my backer sheet and I'm going to use what's called a tacky towel. Basically, I'm getting a little bit of fuzz from this towel onto the back of my stencil. I can actually see it little bit of fuzz there. It's just going to make it not stick too much to our surface. We don't want to um, stretch it out of shape when we pull it up off of the surface. But the adhesive is nice because it's going to lay nicely on this nice smooth surface that we painted and sanded. And it's going to give us a nice crisp image when we pull up the stencil. Okay. So let's see here. The, the size here is about the size of the stencil. So if I kind of center my stencil and slide it up, I think what I'll do is I will line it up at the top. Let's see. Well, that's gonna put Ecclesiastes way down at the bottom. Oh, it's still really sticky. So maybe I will Okay, so my my Ecclesiastes 3-1 is kind of hanging off a little bit. But if I move it over, let's see. That's still pretty centered. I think what I want to do though is I want to center the clock. And then I'm just going to move my stencil slightly for the Ecclesiastes 3-1. I'll just do everything else. And then, oh, I got something big stuck back here. There we go. So we're going to do everything else. And then I'm going to move it over slightly to get the Ecclesiastes 3-1. Okay, I think I have that centered pretty well. You drink half calf all the time. Yeah. Oh, I got another. Wow, that is. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna fuzz this a couple more times because I don't want to 
to stretch my stencil when I pull it off. And when you wash the stencil then with cool water and dry it sticky side up, the it'll be sticky again. So it's not like we're taking, we're not taking this all the sticky off of the stencil, okay? But sometimes you get big blobs of fuzz or something that is stuck to your stencil because it was on your tacky towel. You can wash your tacky towels. I just throw them in the wash. All right, I am keeping it simple. I am doing regular black chalk paste on this. I think this is gonna look really, really nice. All right. Let's just get some loaded up on our squeegee here. All right, now I'm gonna go backwards and get off any excess. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's do our peel and reveal. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's so detailed. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Can you guys see that? Look at that. Where am I going here? I'm trying to get it so you guys have the whole thing in the frame. Hi, Sean. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, let's dry this so I can do the, I'm gonna lay it back down and put the reference, the scripture reference. Oh, thank you, ladies. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my backer sheet here. And all I have to do is just move the Ecclesiastes over just a little bit. I think what I'll do is line my stencil up in the corner of my surface. And then... Do my chalk paste on the reference there. Oh, it got a little, a little uh, blobby, but I can fix that. I must not have had the stencil down quite all the way. But look at there. What do you guys think about that? Now I'm going to show you where it says Ecclesiastes. Do you see how? Can I see? A couple of the letters are a little thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry because it's easier to clean up when it's dry. And then I'm just going to um, gently, where I have a little bit more black than I want, I'm just going to scrape it a little bit, like I'm doing right here on the T. Usually this kind of thing happens if I'm going too fast. <laughs> or I used a little too much um, paste. But really there's only a couple letters that I feel like I need to fix a little bit. <sighs> I 
And yeah, this technique works pretty well, but you, you're going to want to fix it right away, but I'm telling you, it's so much better if you let the chalk paste dry and then you can just gently scratch it off. If you try to do it when it's wet, it'll smear. Okay. So let's dry this. Oh, that looks so pretty. I got it centered on there pretty good too. Yep, this is definitely going in my craft show. Now I'm not worrying about this being perfect. I'm just getting off little spots where it obviously got a little wide. And the other great thing is if it was, you know, if I hated how it turned out, I could sand this, paint it over, and start again. There's always a way to fix something. Always a way. All right, that looks so much better. And all I did was scratch a little bit of the extra off. All right, what do you guys think? Are you guys motivated or inspired to be checking thrift stores or clearance sales for surfaces? I mean, this is real wood and metal. The only thing that's MDF is this middle piece here. Isn't that awesome? Ooh, with real clockworks. Ooh, Carlene, maybe check Amazon. Um, neither, Christy. I have a craft show three times a year at our church. Our next one is our spring craft show, which is April 20. So I will be selling things. Unfortunately, it is after Easter because Easter is so early this year. So I can't really do Easter stuff. So I'm doing more spring and more general non-seasonal stuff. So I have a craft show and then usually a week or two after my craft shows, I have a live sale on my Facebook page. So if you want to be notified of that, make sure you're following my Facebook page, okay? Some stuff I donate, like some of my earlier things that I made on uh, YouTube, my Dollar Tree stuff, some of that I would donate, um, but I, I do pretty well. So like this is the only one of this I'm going to make. I don't mass produce things for my craft show. My craft show booth is usually a bunch of different things that I maybe have one or two of them. And if I have two, they're not exactly the same, okay? So once this is completely dry, I will spray the center with a clear mat spray. And I'm gonna cut this, uh, right now, I'm gonna cut this string and rope off. And once I spray it, it'll be ready to go for the craft show. Cool. Um, sometimes I take my chalk paste, so the black, and I go around the edges, but I really don't think I want to on this one. I think it's good how it is. Oh yeah, Sierra likes the, the live sales. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I do auctions. I do auctions, that's right. It's auctions, but it doesn't include the shipping because some people buy like five or six things. And so um, we just calculate the shipping at the end. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to be on Facebook again tomorrow, Friday and Sunday. I'm doing a special craft around the clock um, vintage and thrifted spring event. So, um, if you're not on Facebook, I'll be back on YouTube Monday. Be sure you've watched uh, this past Monday's new video. I did five uh, Dollar Tree Spring DIYs, 
And um, I hope to see you guys the rest of this week on Facebook. Otherwise, I'll see you next week on YouTube. Bye.